The Legend of Billie Jean. It's a movie. As someone who's legendary for precisely nothing, I feel I'm qualified to talk about the subject. This is an extremely 80s flick starring Helen Slater, Supergirl herself, and Christian Slater, unrelated in his first film role. The movie was originally rated R, but appealed for a PG-13. Hey, leave it, fart face! Whoa, what did they change, I wonder? Girl Slater is Billie Jean, and Boy Slater is Binks, Billie Jean's boyfriend. Yeah, I mean, brother. You're probably gonna notice a lot of intense brother-sister sexual tension in this thing, which, not gonna lie, is pretty creepy. It doesn't help that apparently Christian Slater thought he was destined to marry his on-screen sister. Just ignore the killer trash bag over there. So Billie Jean is a very sweet country girl, independent, strong morals, and she kicks guys in the nuts. Oh. Her brother Binks is a bit hot-headed and has an obsession with the magical land of Vermont. He also comes off like a psychopath. That might just be Christian Slater, though. Anyway, Billie Jean and Binks are enjoying a romantic ride together when they're struck with 80s badly dressed bully syndrome. Time to be douche bras, brah. I'm the picture guy. That's my thing. I take pictures. This ends with a shake to the face for ultimate sonic humiliation. I hate strawberry, brah! These guys have approximately nothing in their lives, so I guess that means following the two of them and messing their shit up. So this is one of those police are useless movies. Billie Jean reports the stolen bike, but the officer tells her to wait a few days to see if the goons return it. Do my job? Shit. Well, that seems like work to me. If they give it back, it doesn't count as theft. <laughs> Shockingly, things don't pan out that way, and instead the goons mess up the bike and punch Binks' face in. We could report them now that we have proof, plus the fact they assaulted my brother, but instead, let's be stupid about this. I mean, independent. To be fair, the cop did say if the bike wasn't back in two days, they'd bring the guy in. He's not entirely unreasonable. Or maybe, I don't know, try another officer? Billie Jean goes to the lead douche bra, Hubie, and gives him an estimate for the bike. And I mean, yeah, he only tenderized her brother's face. He'll probably be reasonable about it. This leads to his father being a creepy creepo and offering to pay it off in exchange for sexual favors. He's a sleazy McMustache, you see. I can do what I want. I have a bolo tie. Following this is a near rape, which ends in Binks accidentally shooting Hubie Dad in the shoulder. I think I blew this one. Now I just have more paperwork, and that's what I was trying to avoid. Man, I'm lazy. Hubie Dad claims they wanted to rob him, which isn't entirely untrue because Binks was totally gonna rob him. Thinking no one will ever believe their story, Billie Jean and Binks take off to live on the run with their friends Ophelia and Putter. Look at those tips. I think they're gross. That's because you don't have any. That's what their parents get for naming their kid Putter. Because he's a fucker, that's how I know. All Billie Jean wants is for Hubie Dad to pay the money for the bike, and it has to be him, fair is fair. Except Hubie was the one who wrecked the bike? She calls the police and says they'll turn themselves in if Hubie Dad pays up, arranging a meetup that ends up going south through very contrived circumstances. I know they were ready to turn themselves in, but I decided to have my son attack her for absolutely no reason other than I'm a cornhole. Which doesn't get them in trouble with the police for some reason? Mustaches don't have to follow the law. This movie rests on the audience swallowing some pretty forced plot devices to get where it needs to go. The result, however, is a delightful product of its time. Check it. We've got G.I. Joe walkie-talkies, toy guns, jumpsuits, and a chase scene in a mall set to Rebel Yell. They use the old tripping on marbles trick. But darn, that cop can't be mad. Look at those crazy kids go. I'm not gonna say this is stupid, but yeah, it's pretty stupid. Binks makes the whole thing worse by threatening the cop with a toy gun, so they can just add threatening to shoot an officer to their completely avoidable resume. I love this guy who hangs out with Officer Lazy. He looks like he's constantly giggling. <laughs> I love my jab. After their story gets out, Billie Jean ends up the face of the whole thing and becomes a media sensation. She stands for all the kids who get stepped on by the man. She fought against injustice. 
or she could just be an accomplice to attempted murder. Hooray! This guy's pretty awesome. This guy grabbed a hold of her backpack and she turned around and kicked him right in the nuts and kept on running. It was hilarious. But Billie Jean is a good-hearted fugitive. She won't hurt anyone or steal, they just leave IOUs for what they need, which is totally not stealing. Breaking into a house and taking their food doesn't count as stealing either. What the hell is this place anyway? It's a rich people house run by a serial killer who has a haunted house upstairs and a window water slide? I've heard of eccentric, but this is ridiculous. Installing this was worth it for this moment! This is Lloyd, the final member of our ragtag team of misfits and a semi-love interest, the neglected son of a district attorney who would totally have a house like that. Also, he might be legitimately crazy. What are those, uppers or downers? They say it's for asthma, but we all know what's really going on here. I wear comically oversized suits. Insanity is nothing compared to how charming and handsome I am. Right. Oh my god, he's going to kill you all! Inspired by Joan of Arc, Billie Jean decides to cut off all of her hair and become incredibly 80s. And yeah, someone being martyred for her faith is totally the same thing as a kid getting shit on by asshole McMustache. Immediately after this drastic change in her look is when she decides to film her side of the story and send it to all of the news stations. You know, you could have maybe... I don't know... Done that after you broadcast yourself to the world? And hidden -er. Lloyd suggests they pretend he's a hostage so they have some leverage with the cops. Yet another brilliant fake crime! Leading the police on this expensive and needless manhunt is totally innocent! Woohoo! I've got a message from Billy Jean! That's what you owe, and we're not turning ourselves in till we get it. Fair is fair! We didn't start this, we didn't mean it to happen, but we're not giving up till you pay. Fair is fair! Yeah! Hooray! Fair is fair! I like people with catchphrases. Billie Jean has become a full-blown folk hero now. She can solve lots of problems for people, like telling an abusive father to let his son stay with a relative, or her army of small children will tell on him. Problem realistically portrayed and solved. I guess child abuse is only comical in this movie when it happens to Putter. Mommy! You're gonna have to really love some montages to watch this movie, because it can get slow. We're treated to a montage of montages. Endless strings of music set to Billie Jean roaming the countryside, inspiring a new haircut craze, and everyone thinking she's the coolest. Except for the occasional nut job that tries to shoot her for no reason other than it'll be more dramatic. She's been shot! No, I haven't! But there's blood! Oh my god, Putter, it's happened. It's about time. Periods? <laughs> they could have been murdered horribly. Gross. You keep quiet, Binks. It's wonderful. Billie Jean, you are so creepy. Hooray! Little stupid sheep! Break the machine or something! All of this ends with an impressively ridiculous standoff. Billie Jean is lured in by the cops, who are offering a new bike for Binks. Meanwhile, everyone in the state is partying there with Billie Jean merchandise. This is something you're just gonna have to accept through the whole movie. Binks is sent in undercover as Billie Jean, and shot by snipers sent in by Lloyd's dad. Which, again, is done without the permission of the police in charge. Billie Jean goes to face Hubie Dad, who's been making a profit off of her image this whole time. Look who's wearing the bolo tie now! Oh! You can keep your money. Go buy somebody else. Uh, what was the point of this again? She burns the place down, the cop just lets her go, and they take off to Vermont. Happy ending for all! Except for Hubie, his dad, love interest guy who got left behind, and their mom, and their friends who were probably arrested for helping them, and the cop who was probably fired. Wait, how the hell did Binks get out of the hospital without being arrested? Yeah, stick it to the man! Or... something! 
It doesn't seem like the main characters ever encounter anything that serious, even when it totally is. They never come across anything that difficult while they're on the run. Like, you don't see them at creepy bus stops with crazy hobos or something. They stay at cool places like abandoned mini golf buildings, cool soundtracks, Coca-Cola product placement, beachside view. Life on the run is a fun adventure. There's something really appealing about a Robin Hood type character who represents kids and standing up for what's right. Except that's not really who Billie Jean is. In fact, as far as the world knows, she's a bad guy. People keep spreading rumors about them robbing places and burning down schools, and people believe it because they just think it's cool to break the law. And to be honest, she didn't try that hard before deciding to go on the run and become a vigilante. As little vigilanteism as there is in this. It's all a little muddled, I guess. However, on the upside, well, it doesn't really matter. It's totally a wish fulfillment movie. It's about having fun, getting lost, becoming a hero, and taking out some paper thin villain types. The plot is ridiculous, the characters quirky and humorous, and it's a good watch. It's a fun flick with an awesome soundtrack, a 100% slice of that decade. If you're looking to get lost in a corny time capsule, this won't disappoint. So remember, folks, fair is fair. Catchphrase worked a little better in the movie.